it's my great privilege to be with you all today to be able to start this launch of the portal, which we are very privileged to be able to launch for Open Access Week, celebrating the work and scholarship of Zudishan. We will have three speakers today, um, and it will be a relatively short half hour event, but we hope that you enjoy it. I'd like to start with an acknowledgement of country. So I acknowledge that I am hosting this launch via a webinar from the lands of the Ngunnawal people. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands on which you all work today and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in this webinar. I pay my respects to elders past and present and celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing cultures and connections to the lands and waters of Australia. So this has been a journey of love, of love, of pain, of discovery for us. And over the past three years, we have put an extraordinary amount of effort into digitising the works of Sudishan and learning more about this foundation collection of the university and, in fact, the establishment of the university. It's really a collection which speaks enormously to the role of the university. So the university, when it was established by an Act of Parliament in 1946, was established by the Minister for Post-War Reconstruction. So we were part of the construction of the nation of Australia, of our national identity, of national research. In his second reading speech, the minister particularly called out the importance of situating Australia within the region, within the Pacific, within Asia, and that he saw that there would be extraordinary discoveries and thinking that the university would contribute to beyond the boundaries of Australia, and that in fact this vision of creating an international contribution was central to the vision of the university at that time. And here we are in 2021, rebuilding ourselves almost post COVID to think about how we reconstruct knowledge, how we connect to the world. And the Zudishan project has been one of the most important projects that the library has undertaken in order to fulfill that national mission. So in terms of having the launch today, we are so delighted to be able to take that international perspective um, through the two speakers who will speak to us today. So we're very privileged to have Ms. Gao Ru, who is Councillor of the Embassy of the Chinese Embassy. And our second speaker will be Associate Professor Ben Hillman. In introducing our first speaker, I would like to mention the importance of the engagement with Chinese scholars and with Chinese students. The Australian National University has had a very significant set of activities that we have had in the region. And it's been a great privilege for us to be able to engage with China in many different ways. We are a member of the International Alliance of Research Universities, which includes uh, Beijing University. And I was very privileged to be able to attend a meeting of the International Alliance of Research Universities librarians there uh, about four years ago. And I must say the, the collections, the commitment to scholarship, the research is just extraordinary. So our contribution in digitising and creating a portal for the Zudishan collection and Zudishan research is just a small part of a very larger rich ecosystem uh, but it is one that we are delighted to be able to make a contribution to. So please let me hand over to the Councillor of the, MC, of the Embassy, uh, Ms. Gao Rui, to be able to give us a few words. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, everyone. Uh, dear uh, Labarry, uh, Miss um, Missingham, dear Professor Human, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much to having me here. It is a great honor. Firstly, I want to uh, thank ANU Library 
for acquiring the Chinese book collection of our prestigious writer Xu Dishan and making every effort to carefully digitize his collection and develop an online portal which should be more accessible to ordinary readers and researchers. As you all know, Xu is a very great modern Chinese writer and his work are very impressive to my generation who were born in 1970s and 1980s. And uh, one of his essay named The Peanut, which sounds very interesting, The Peanut, and also uh, Peanuts is his um, uh, pen name. The Peanuts was selected in middle school textbooks in mainland China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan as well. Time flies but I could still remember this essay because my tutor told me to recite it accurately, word for word. So uh, the essay, uh, it authentically records a family activity from planting peanuts, harvesting peanuts, and to eating peanuts. And also the education received by the author when he was a child. By discussing the benefits of peanuts, the pros reveals the character of peanuts, that is being silently dedicated without vanity. It encouraged people to be humble, selfless, pursuing the real meaning and value of life and Bill and being contributing to both his family, his community, and the whole society. So, you know, uh, all these virtues and values are still cherished by us Chinese people. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Missingham, for introducing Xu's portal. Your dedicated work has made it possible and much easier for Australia's citizens to feel the nourishment of Chinese literature. Sec secondly, I want to, uh, I like to thank CIW. You have made a tremendous contribution to promote the understanding of China in Australia. I was fortun fortunate enough to attend the China Yearbook of 2020 launch at the National Press Club last April. Although I couldn't say that I totally agree all the views in your book, I still admire and appreciate your continuous dedicated efforts to present quality, sophisticated research on China and present a multi-dimensional image of China. Last but not the least, I want to thank all Australia intellectuals who are committed to promoting traditional Chinese philosophy and Chinese culture, to guiding the Australian public to understand them from general cognition to in-depth comprehension. Uh, this year marks the 100th anniversary of the communist of the founding of the uh, Communist Party of China. We realized the first uh, centenary goal, building a moderate perspective prosperous uh, society in all respect. It also marks the start of marching towards the second centenary goal at 2049, that is to realize Chinese, China's national rejuvenation, which also includes cultural revival. As Chinese proverb goes, a single flower does not mean spring. Therefore, we stand for maintaining the diversity of civilizations in the world, for respecting the civilizations of all nations, all ethnics, and for mutual learning among different civilizations. I think this is also the very reason why ANU and the CIW are making your meaningful efforts to promoting cultural exchanges between China and Australia. I do hope this will lay a solid foundation for the driving of our bilateral relations to the right track 
through these difficult periods. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was wonderful. And how wonderful to link it to your school days as well. Yes, yes, many, many years ago. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Okay, now our second speaker is Associate Professor Ben, Hil ben Hillman, who is currently the Interim Director of the Australian Centre on China and the World, CIW. His research examines policies and mechanisms for promoting political inclusion and safeguarding minority rights. He's a political scientist, public policy researcher and advisor. And thank you so much, Ben, for coming to speak to us today. Thanks very much, uh, Roxanne, for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you, uh, uh, Galray, for your uh, excellent remarks. They're much uh, appreciated, including your very kind uh, comments on uh, CIW. I uh, am in, uh, very proud to be serving as the interim director of the Australian Centre on China in the World, uh, which is a very significant endowment uh, by the Commonwealth Government at the ANU. And it's an endowment that's designed to foster uh, a wide range of scholarship on the Sinosphere. That is uh, multidisciplinary research that draws on the best traditions of the humanities and the social sciences that also engages with the uh, policy making community. The uh, centre is also committed to uh, sharing the diversity of China related scholarship at the ANU with the broader public nationally and internationally. And we're also committed uh, to providing resources for academics at ANU and uh, around the world. And it is because of that mission, because of that very important mission that we have, that we are excited to be uh, a part of the launch today of what is a magnificent collection. And it is really truly wonderful that the ANU through the hard work of the library is able to provide that to a global audience the global researchers and students and it, it's, it's a tremendous resource and it's, it's a tremendous gift. And it also excites me because it really reminds me and my colleagues of the importance of China and China related research at the ANU at Australia's National University. And it reminds us that when the collection was acquired uh, so many decades ago, indeed, the university was so young, only just founded when the collection was acquired. It really demonstrated from the very start a profound commitment to be engaged in world leading research on China. And that is a commitment that we have maintained through the decades and that I think is uh, really amply expressed in the creation of the Australian Centre on China in the World. Uh, which is now entering its second decade. And these are the types of projects uh, that involve collaborations with universities in Hong Kong uh, and other parts of the, um, the Sinosphere that we hope to build on and do more of in the future. So it's really wonderful to see this project uh, come to fruition after everyone's hard work and to see uh, the value of the collaborations. Uh, and to be reminded of the importance of, uh, of collaborating uh, across uh, our institutions. So thank you um, and welcome everyone. And I hope all of you uh, make extensive use of this truly marvelous collection of works. And special thanks to Roxanne uh, and all her colleagues uh, at the library services at the ANU for making this possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. That was lovely. And it is just such a privileged to be working with the Australian Centre for China and the world um, and supporting all of the richness of your uh, wonderful continuing work and collaboration. So I thought I would just uh, say a few words about the project and the achievements and why we focused on this to give you a context uh, before we finish. And so I've pulled up the page that has the um, start of our portal so you can see it. So I just wanted to again 
um, call back on the earliness. While we say we are a young university, this is our 75th anniversary. So this is a gift we are making in our 75th anniversary. And when the university was established, it was a small and passionate group of scholars and that were collected from around the world. One of the really important um, and beneficial parts of that experience for the university and the university librarian was one of the first appointments was to actually work with scholars to create a centre that would provide knowledge to both attract people to the new university and also be a cornerstone for the future research that would happen. This was really very interesting because uh, C.P. Fitzgerald, who acquired the collection, was a passionate Chinese scholar. And while his field was not uh, literature and the uh, philosophical study that was Zhu Dishan's frame, he saw that understanding China and Chinese people really needed those perspectives, not just works on economy, uh, and foreign relations. So it was a scholar-led acquisition. Uh, he acquired many, many boxes which were shipped over here that were worked on for many years before they were fully integrated into the library's collection. And it was the first formed collection that the university library acquired. So the library staff had been working very hard to buy works from secondhand booksellers and new booksellers, but we are extraordinary privileged at different times through our lives in universities to get formed collections and this was the collection of Chinese language works from the library of Zhu Dishan. The University of Hong Kong has the English language works and some manuscript material so between us we've been talking about what we can do next year in their anniversary to move forward in terms of collaboration to bring more knowledge about Zhu Dishan and more digitised Chinese material and academic engagement together. So that's very important for us. In terms of being a new university, creating an identity in the world was also very important. And the university library continues to assist in making that identity strong, diverse and deep. We've been leading digitisation projects for the last six years or so that have really focused on the treasures in our collections. This was the first formed collection, so it was clearly a remarkable treasure. And we have also digitised all of the ANU theses. So if anyone in ANU has done a PhD thesis on China, that is now available through our website. We have many other wonderful collections as well that we continue to promote. And we very, are very committed to making the deep research materials available to scholars, albeit within a limited budget, but in a way that will actually continue to engage researchers in the identification of areas that we can make a major contribution to by making collections digital. The Zhu Dishan collection itself of Chinese texts is very deep with many historic materials. We think one of them dates back to 1411. So the whole process of digitizing has involved taking every single volume and making a scan of every single page very, very, very carefully with um, any conservation work on the material that was required. I'd like to acknowledge the team that have done this painstaking but very important work. Stephanie Luke was a tireless leader. There were times, I think, when she thought this might never end. And of course, then it was interrupted by COVID last year, then this year. So it has been an adventure that has climbed mountains, that has taken the peanuts out of the ground and created a wonderful uh, treasure house of resources that is rich, um, and hopefully will make a real difference to scholars. Erin Gallant has been the leader of the digital scholarship team and has done marvellous work on all of the digitisation projects, including this one. And the team that brought you the digitised copies included Casley Rowan, who was a student ambassador that we employed to do this. Frederica Schimmelfenning has been a major contributor to the development of the website as have Jackie Clements, Tom Foley, 
Patrick Burns, who's contributed in many other ways as well from our SAS communications team, Michelle Chazinski, who's also contributed to the website and to the communication strategy, Mayuki Matthews, who's contributed her knowledge, and Candida Spence, who is an absolute powerhouse of helping us run events, particularly Zoom. So this wonderful um, portal has been brought to you by a village of people within the university library. It brings treasures and it brings a profile, I think, to the nature of Chinese study, research and collections at the university that we hope will be a foundation for future collaboration, both with the University of Hong Kong and with Chinese scholars around the world. So we very much hope that you enjoy the portal. We're delighted to be able to launch it today on the very first day of Open Access Week. Uh, and I'm very, very proud of the wonderful work of the team that have brought this uh, wonderful resource to you. So thank you, everybody. Thank you to our speakers today. It's been absolutely wonderful to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the team. And thank, thank you, you to all of the attendees. Hmm. Thank you. Well Congratulations. Thank you so much. This is Marvin, and we will have a party when we're all back on campus. We will invite you to. Okay, thank you. Looking forward to that.